So despite dissent being far more common than most people would assume in China, uh, according to your report, you actually believe you underestimated uh, the actual amount of dissent. Why is that? Um, two main reasons. One it has to do with our own information collection. Uh, because we run across censorship in the course of trying to get information, we, we actually see things disappear, right? So the, we can, uh, in real time with our own eyes, see stuff that was there is no longer there, and we, can know, we can't record it anymore. Um, as a, we can't uh, document it in our database. So you know, doing this work for months at a time, you just start to, to see these things, and you see the, the, the efforts to restrict this information. So that leads to the reasonable conclusion that there's more information out there about protests than we're reporting. Um, that's one. And then another one is, is uh, uh, pulling in previous research and other academic and, and even some civil society efforts from the past. Other people have tried to use different ways to get at the scale of uh, collective action and protests in China and found thousands or even tens of thousands of events every year. Um, you know, interestingly, uh, up until 2010, one of the pieces of evidence for this was the Chinese government itself. So the Ministry of Public Security used to publish, I don't know if, uh, if you all recall this, but uh, they used to publish something called the Chu Di Xing Shi Jin. I'm forgetting the, the, the word for that in English right now. Um, You're talking about mass incidents? Mass incidents. Thank you. I don't know why I was drawing a blank on that. Chu Di Xing Shi Jin is mass incidents. So um, the public security keeps track of this, and they probably still do. You know, they just don't tell us about it. Um, but for a number of years, they were publishing this figure. Uh, uh, and in 2010, there was an academic. So that in 2010, they did, they no longer provided this information to the public, but they apparently provided it to somebody at the um, at uh, SAS, the the so, um, uh, Center for Social. Uh, studies in, in um, Beijing. And there was a researcher there who revealed through those numbers that it was that year something like 150 to 180,000 uh, events. Now, mass, we have to put an asterisk next to that because mass incidents um, is not necessarily just protests. It actually includes a lot of other things, uh, sort of collective events that the government deems um, a source of instability. Um, but it gives you a sense of sort of uh, generally that there's a lot that's going on within the PRC. Um, and what we can capture through open source information and other sources um, is only going to be, is probably only going to be a part of that, uh, um, a sort of a, a certain proportion of that, and maybe even a small proportion of that. Um, what's different, about, I'll just add to that, what's different about our approach, though, compared to some past approaches, is the way that we're coding events um, we, we really uh, try to uh, code them across these variables in order to provide some comparability and trend analysis. And that's something that is quite time consuming, but uh, it, over time it provides a really valuable source of information that allows us to make uh, you know, generalizations or, or, or have a better understanding about some of the things we've been talking about today, whether they're how often repression happens or the scale of these protests or who the target is and what the demands are. Um, so uh, that's a little bit of a different approach that uh, China Descent Monitor has taken to this to this issue. Yeah, and I really wonder how uh, COVID lockdowns and the party Congress may have affected the number of protests, like if it increased it, decreased it. Yeah, there's just a lot of data. That's, it's, it's very important to, to actually get together. Yeah. Um, I would say having done this for four months, now, I officially started collecting four to five months now that it's, uh, maybe too early for us to say, uh, if the numbers that we're seeing now are going up or down relative to the past only because we don't have, you know, we haven't been doing this before June, 2022, <clears throat> and it's so time consuming that it'd be very difficult for us to go back and get this information before June, 2022 in the same way. Um, so uh, we're really looking forward to in the coming months and like sometime next year, being able to look at patterns throughout time. Um, for example, I mean, one partial estimate that we can make based on uh, efforts that have made by uh, 
made by other civil society organizations like uh, China Labor Bulletin, which follows strikes and, and labor disputes in China. Um, we can estimate that, for example, right before the Lunar New Year, there'll probably be um, uh, a spike in labor-related protests uh, because a lot of uh, a lot of times um, there's wage arrears and unpaid wages that come to the fore right as people are getting ready to leave and go uh, on Lunar New Year, go home or or take the break for Lunar New Year, and that leads to a lot of disputes. Um, so. You know, you might see sort of a, an ebb and flow based on on major uh, social periods like that. And one thing I noticed also looking at the database is that there is a like you, the way that you're coding the the dissent. There's a lot of different things, like you mentioned, strikes, um, the group protest, the sign protest, and then I noticed even things like um, practicing faith was a category, and you know, some of the things that were in there were like Tibetans who had um, a picture of the Dalai Lama in their home. Right. This is, um, I'm really glad you asked about that. So this actually gets a little bit into our methodology. Uh, I won't get into the weeds too much, but I think it's worth mentioning. So we spent a lot of time before starting documentation, trying to come up with the definition of dissent. And this is a more difficult issue than uh, you might imagine on the face of it because we're talking about China. Um, so in the context, you know, what, what is dissent really depends on, on the context. Um, and through a lot of consultation and, and discussion, we came up with a definition that was quite broad. So um, the definition that we actually, I can pull it up here to, uh, to read it directly. So the definition that we ended up uh, using, the base definition for dissent, was uh, actors or a single actor within the People's Republic of China um, voicing grievances, asserting rights, advancing their interests, their public interest in contention with the interests of political authorities, social authorities, or social structures. So this is a very broad definition. But the key uh, sort of term there is uh, challenging authority, some sort of authority um, within the context. And what that opens up this project too is, is being able to find cases where people are using um, uh, with, within their social or cultural uh, or political context using um, different forms or modes of action to challenge authority. And, and that and so when you're talking about uh, this sort of dynamic, the community really matters. So in the case of uh, Tibetans, which you just mentioned, just having a picture of the Dalai Lama, Having a picture of an individual, we all know, uh, is um, quite contentious and can lead to a, a serious reprisal. Um, whereas, if you were in a different community, having a picture of your religious leader uh, would be, you know, no issue whatsoever. Um, it wouldn't even be worth mentioning. So, um, it's really contextual, uh, and that was one thing that that we came away with during uh, consultations for uh, coming up with this methodology um, is that the context matters a lot um, for. Um, and this is one of the reasons that led us to include uh, uh, sort of um, practicing your religious faith. A lot of religious communities in, or, or communities of faith in China are uh, persecuted just for practicing their faith in, in small ways. And when it's clear that when when it's um, when a certain group knows that what they're doing uh, can lead to reprisals. Um, uh, uh, like worshiping together or uh, sharing information about their uh, about their faith, um, and they still do it anyway. That is a type of dissent within within the definition that we're using because they're challenging um, the often the political authorities in that context. Um, so uh, we have a sample of the. I should mention that for things that are less public, like practicing your faith or collectively worshiping. Um, those are more difficult to record and they're probably happening so frequently anyway that we're only going to be capturing a small sample of them. So we, we sort of admit that uh, and, and we're transparent about the fact that we're just trying to collect examples of these types, uh, types of dissent to include them as, uh, to show the diversity of protest that's going on um, and different forms of dissent that are going on in China. Whereas with uh, offline protest and different sorts of collective action, we're really trying to capture um, a more 
uh, comprehensive picture um, so that we can compare frequency over time. Um, so uh, yeah, we, we, we do try to use a, a broader definition of descent in order to capture those different forms.